Hello, welcome, thanks for coming back. Today we're going to be looking at Allegretto by Carcassi, and I say the grade two piece. I'll break the video up with a playthrough, then telling you what notes and chords you need to know, and then a note by note breakdown of the piece. So of course, that was with no repeats. Um, you can make it longer by playing all the repeats that are in there. I just want to get through this for you guys, nice and quick. So the notes that you need in this piece, it is in C major. It briefly goes into G major. So our C major notes, we're going to go from the lowest to the highest note in the piece. So it starts down on G, third fret on the sixth string, then A, open A, B, second fret on the fifth string, C, third fret on the fifth string, D, open D string, E, second fret on the E string, F, third fret on the D string, open G, A, second fret on the G string, B, to open B, C, first fret on the B string, D, is the third fret on the B string, we have E, so open E, F, first fret on the E string, when we briefly go into G major, we're going to play F sharp, so that's second fret, and then G, third fret on the E string. So remember that E is the first string, B is the second, G is the third, D is the fourth, A is the fifth, and E is the sixth. So they are the notes that we're going to use. Now the chords we're going to use are all pretty simple, so we're going to have a C chord. We're not going to play a full C chord, but we're going to break it up into different things. So C is going to be C on the A string, E on the D string, open G, C on the B string, and E. Now we've got a finger that with our third, second, and then first fingers. It's just a nice basic chord. Um, the other chords we're going to have are a couple of versions of G. So we're going to have G7. So if you put your G C chord down, and then you make your second and third fingers go across one string, and your first finger go the other way, so that your third finger is now on the sixth string on the G, your second finger is on the D, you have open D, G and B, and then your first finger is playing the F on the first string. Now for a normal G chord, you can have the G on the top, you can play that either with your pinky or your third finger, depending on how you want to finger it. So you can go from G7 to G, or you can play your normal strum G. There is also another G7 that turns up in this piece, and that's going to be... So it's actually a part of a G7 chord. So if you go, you'll get G7. So G, F, G, B, G. Or you can put a B in there as well. And we're going to break that one down into a two or three note parts in the piece. And then we have a D7 in there. So D7 is normally open D, A with your second finger, C with your first, and F sharp with your third finger. But in the context of the piece, you can finger it with your first and second finger because we don't play the A. So you can use your C for the first finger still, and you can use your second finger to play the F sharp on the E string. So they are all the chords that you use in the piece in their full form. But when we go through the piece, they're going to be broken down into just dyads, so two note versions with a pedal. So going through the piece, it is in um, it's in two four, and it has an anacrusis. So the very first note we play is on the and of two. If you're counting yourself in, so you go one and two and one. So the first note is an E. It's on the and. Now this is important because you need to get the rhythm going. You need to get the the pulse. This is important because you need to get the pulse happening. You need to know where beat one is. So if you go. 
and you play that E really loud and the G quieter, it'll sound like E is on B1, but E is on the, on the upbeat, so you need to make B1 louder. So the first four notes we get E, G, F, D, E. So the counting for that is and one and two and. You have to make that come through when you're playing. Yeah, so we know where the beat is. Uh, you can play the G with your pinky or your third, depending on what's more comfortable for you. In other parts of the song, it's going to be uh, mandatory to play it with the... In some songs, you're going to have to play G with your pinky. So the first phrase again is E, G, F, D, E. So that's our nice little opening phrase with the upbeat. And then we get our first arpeggio. Now these arpeggios are in 16th notes. So if we've got an and one and two and one E and a two and to get the rhythm right. One E and a two and. So we're gonna be doing this with C chord. We don't have the E in there. So all we need down is our C on the A string and our C on the B string and our right hand fingering pattern. So thumb is gonna play whatever bass we have. I or your index finger is going to play the G string, your middle finger is going to play the B string, and your ring finger is going to play the E string. So we're going to go P, I, M, I for our one E and a. Yeah, P, I, M, I. Remember the ring finger is called A. So we're going to go P, I, M, I, A, M. We'll be counting one E and a two. G7 chord, so we just have to move our two fingers across. Our third finger goes to the sixth string, and our first finger goes to the first string. Our thumb's going to play that sixth string bass, and the rest of the pattern's the same. P I M I A M, one E and a two and. And then we go back to the C chord, but instead of playing A M at the end, playing E C. We're going to play E E, so we can go A M, but you play the same note. So you get yeah. so it's going to be note wise C G C G E E, and this is important because that second E is the upbeat back into our opening motif. So we have. The opening motif twice, we have two C chords and one G7 chord. So and then we just have another C chord, exactly the same as the first one, another G chord, and it just finishes on the two C's. So coming out of our G chord. G chord's exactly the same, one E and a two and, and then on one, two C's. So first fret on the second string and third fret on the fifth string. We have a repeat here. If you look at the score, you'll see the repeat is in between the two and the and. So this lets us go back to the anacrusis. So if we were to play the repeat, we would get one and two and one and two and so forth. Now if we don't play the repeat and we go into the second part, we're going to get into a different type of feel. So we're going to have and one and two and one and two and one and two and one and two and... Now here we have two scales going in contrary motion. Here's our bass line and our treble line. together with a pedal in between. So we start off with F and B and going to the G. So finger-wise with our right hand we're going to go thumb and middle finger, going to our, our index finger. So for this whole section you may want to practice just going pinch, index, pinch, index, because that pinch is going to change. Sometimes depending on what you want to do you can you get to the E string, you can pinch using your A ring, your A finger or your ring finger. 
So it's good to practice your right hand technique before you even really think about the left hand technique so you can get onto autopilot. So what you have to do is sort of do pinch, pedal, pinch, pedal. So you've got to pinch with your thumb and either your middle or ring finger and then pedal onto your index finger. So when you're playing a bass with the B string, you're going to be pinching with the thumb and your middle. And when you're doing a bass and the E string, you're going to be pinching with your thumb and your ring. You can, of course, still just use your middle. All depends to the on if you want to keep to one finger per string. So it's good to practice. Pinch, pedal, pinch, pedal. In all the different combinations you can come up with. So you've got your three bass notes and your two treble notes. sticking with the B string and using my thumb to go to all the different bases. Now do the same thing by sticking with the E string. So you can get used to that motion of the pinch pedal, pinch pedal. So let's get the notes out now. So the first pinch is going to be F with B. So F on the D string, third fret and open B. And then we're going to have E and C. So E on the D string. C on the B string, and then we're going to have B and D, so our second finger has got to go from the E to the B on the A string, and we can hear we want to use our pinky for the D, it's more comfortable, at least I find, you may want to play with bird. So we have the D and the B, and then we move on to C and E, so third finger comes onto the C, now we play the open E. So that's our first four notes. This is where we move into G major for a moment because we're going to play a D7 chord. Slightly different technique here, instead of doing a pinch with the thumb and the finger, we're going to just play a little block chord using our index and middle finger. So, two fingers plucking at the same time. And we're going to be plucking C and F sharp and pedaling with our thumb onto the D. nice little change. So it's a G chord, so we have B and G, played with those two fingers again, and then we're just going to go G, B, E. Now you can play that index middle ring or thumb index middle, up to you. I like it with the thumb, gives it a stronger note. So. And then our ending motif. C, A, B, and G's. That's a G bass on the sixth string in the open G. Back to the beginning, so you've got to get the counting right. One and two and one and two. Crucis again. So we go back to the beginning, play the whole beginning section again, even though in the score it's just rewritten. So that's the so that's the whole piece. Pretty straightforward, nice arpeggios, bit of melody. The trick with this is getting those 16th note arpeggios in time. So I'll just play it um, quickly again. It's actually meant to be a bit faster than I played it at the beginning, so it's meant to be more like Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. Please remember to click subscribe and hit the bell, hit like, 
Leave a comment if you have any pieces that you would like me to cover so you can learn them. And don't forget to check out my um, lesson playlists as well. I'll leave a link to that so you can see my other lessons. Thank you and see you next time.